puto, eh. ¡La máquina! Hi folks, welcome! I always dream about having my wooden trombone and usually I use my CNC machine to cut and engrave the wood but it takes so much time. Today I want to use something new, a laser cutting and engraving machine. It's so powerful I can build multiple trombone if it really works and start a business. So let's see what it is. Let me take it. This for sure will be a great upgrade for my shop. I already own one of these Creality Falcon 2 Pro machine. I earned a 30 watt version, but this is much more powerful. It's the new 60 watt version. This is capable to cut 3 centimeters of material without problems, but I'm sure it can cut much deeper. So today we're going to test it. First of all, let's see in the box what we have. The most important thing is this new laser head. This is the 60 watt laser head, but with a single button that is present on the back, we can decide how much power bring to the laser. So we can choose if you want to have a precise cut, a normal cut or a very powerful one. So we pass between 22 watts, 40 watts or 60 watts mechanically by one single switch, but you can also change the power via software. So this is the main laser head that is great for cutting wood, but also for engraving without problems. But if you want to have much thinner and detailed engrave, you can choose with this 1.6 watt laser head that is present in the box as well. So the procedure is very simple. You just have to mount the laser head inside. All the, all the machine it comes already assembled. So very easy. And you can see that now everything moves without problems. We have two stepper motors that control the movement. And we also have the closing top that goes here this is so important because protect our eyes but also the most important thing we catch all the smoke that we are producing while we are cutting and can push it away with a very powerful fan that looks like a PC fan but is much more powerful so I can close everything with some little screws here on the bottom and all around and now I'm ready to test it. And so finally the machine is ready. Just 10 minutes, it came already assembled, so it's pretty easy. We need now to power all the machine and we have this power brick, which is crazy beefy. We have 24 volts and 15 amps that brings 60 volts directly to the laser beam, which is the most powerful <laughs> diode laser to cut and engrave. And we also add, uh, have this, that is the air pump. We have to plug it in here on the side. Let me show you how we have this rubber tube that is plugged here and we also have the electric connector and uh, we can turn on and off this air pump assist by software or just using this potentiometer here on the side and this is crucial because this will bring compressed air directly to the laser beam which is so so handy because from the laser beam we shoot out like a light beam but also compressed air which brings and push away smoke, the breeze, and clean the cut so we can cut deeper and cleaner. So this laser is capable to cut up to three, three centimeters, which is crazy, and I can't wait to turn it on. So let's plug it to the computer and see how it performs. So now I can design into Fusion 360 like a wooden trombone or a didgeridoo, something like this with this hexagonal shape that gets twisted and narrows at the top. So it looks amazing. To make my own trombone, I want to recycle this. It is scrap wood took apart from pellets. So it's pretty thick, but I'm sure the machine is capable to cut such a thick wood. So let's put it in the machine. So I can place anywhere in the cutting area of the laser and close the door. And in this case, I want to test the 60 watt power of this laser head. So I'm going to choose this. It is much thicker. It's almost three centimeters thick. After using the protection for my eyes, I can close the door and frame the laser. This will start to project the, the position of the cut. And now that I'm sure that everything is perfectly centered, I can start at full power, 60 watt, this laser beam. So you can see that only two or three paths are necessary to cut this thick wood. And in only five minutes, I already have all the hexagonal shapes necessary for my project. It looks amazing. And it's so, so, so easy to remove them from the board. <laughs> <laughs> and something like this with another laser is almost impossible. So, so this wood <laughs> is terrible. It is all cracked up. I recycled it from a board of the market, but isn't good for this project. It's all full of crack, and every crack can change the sound of the dirigible. So we need to find a better wood. And in this case, I have this board 
The tie already precisely cut with a similar dimension of the cutting area of the machine. And are 80 millimeters thick and I can place them inside the machine and this guarantees we will have a very precise cut and also it's easier to glue them up. So let's put them in the machine. So having the perfect dimension allows me to place as well the, all the parts via software just thinking to have maximum results. So no waste board and these are all the hexagonal shapes being cut with the 60 watt laser head. Without problems so it took me almost half an hour and I already have all the parts I need for starting the glue up. I just have to repeat th this procedure with, uh, with other three boards and the final cost is almost for about 20 bucks, so very cheap <laughs> and it's so handy. I just have to push them on the other side. No sandpaper, no knife are necessary to remove the parts from the boot board. So repeat this procedure also with the bigger parts. And uh, you can see that now that I'm having much more experience with this machine, I just boost up a little bit more the power of the machine. And you can see that they already come loose apart without pushing. You can see that overall the cut is precisely clean no burn marks on the side yeah, and without sanding the parts I can already use them in this way so I took some time to order in a, in a growing uh, number all the parts so that now it's just a matter of gluing the parts together without making mistakes so let's start gluing up almost 10 parts at a time so this is much easier I'm going to choose a uh, wood resistant glue this is vinyl glue and this the reason why I'm using waterproof glue is because maybe some humidity or some saliva gets inside the trombone so it's important that the glue glue stays there without problems so all the sections are ready and I just have to glue them up one on top of each other without messing the order of the parts and this vinyl glue is great for this project it dries in only 20 minutes so I can't wait to see if it really sounds how loud it is and it looks amazing it looks like an art piece <laughs> And it sounds so terrible. The reason is that it's all squared up. We have so many corners and all these faces. Uh, if you think about it, all the instruments, all the musical instruments are rounded. Like if you think about the drum are round, also the guitar is rounded, they have no corners inside. And also a flute or a saxophone is round. The reason, the reason why is because the, the, the sound waves have to travel and bounce inside and amplify them just by bouncing on inside. So this is impossible, we have so many corners and the sound waves will be suck and catch and die in this corner. So I think I want to do the project again and this time stick with a much more original shape, a round shape that gets oval at the, at the top. So I think this will work. So let's put it in a machine and cut all the parts. So I prepare all the vector files and I'm ready to put them into light burn as well and this time I want to have the less scrap material and waste part so I place all the rings one inside of another this is a pretty big mess to re remember the order of each ring but lucky for me I draw on paper all the position of each component and now I just have to mark it with the marker so now I just have to read the numbers and order in the right order all the parts so you can see that they start small and they grow up until they get bigger and bigger and now I repeat the procedure using this waterproof glue to glue 10 of these rings at a time and later I will glue up all the section together. I'm doing this with my girlfriend and I, we are so curious to see if it sounds or not. So let's test it here on the table. So theoretically the shape of this trombone will work, it's round, it's perfectly round, all the parts are perfectly glue and the reason why it's not sounding great is because the material I choose is too soft, this is very soft wood and I can really feel it with my fingers and the inside, it doesn't create sound even if I flick it with my finger, it's too soft. So I have to find like a wood stain, something that can harden the wood 
and I can think out of the box and use some epoxy resin to do this. It will work great. The only problem is to apply the epoxy resin in a perfect layer all around the outside and the inside of the instrument. And I already built something that allows me to spin the part. So let's move in the, in the other room. So this spinning machine is completely recycled. We have a motor that was from a meat grinder. We have a brass pulley that was from a sewing machine. And overall, it's working great. So the trombone is spinning and this allows me to place the epoxy resin on top without forming and creating very, very ugly drop on the bottom. So I will let it spin for 24 hours constantly and this will deposit and create a perfect layer of epoxy resin in the outside and also pouring the epoxy resin in the inside will spin by itself and create a perfect layer as well in the inside. Consider that this wood will suck the epoxy and gets harder also in the inside, which is great. It looks amazing and I can't wait to test the sound of it. <laughs> That's amazing and finally here it's perfectly glue up and it's so lightweight and it's so incredible how all the epoxy resin stick to the wood perfectly. There are some spots where the wood itself suck the epoxy resin into the fibers, which is great. I think all over this project, the trombone suck the epoxy inside this wood. It's much harder and even if I flick it right now, it really sounds like hollow tube and it, it, wow, it's changed sound depending on the thickness of the wood. Here is much lower the tone and here is much higher the tone. So uh, let me test it and let's see if it really sounds. <laughs> it sounds like a, a sheep horn and it's impossible for me to prove to you to the, with a microphone how loud it is. There's only one way is to move outside of the shop and see the reaction of the people and also how far away I can hear this trombone. <laughs> Let's go outside in the center of this city, Torino. <laughs> And it's working and it's so loud. I really love the sound of this instrument. And today, the best thing is that we learn two different things. The first one is that the shape of the instrument is so important, otherwise it will not allow to bounce the sound and create a perfect wave, wave sound inside. The second thing is the material. So you have to choose a very hard wood or a very good quality wood. So that's the reason why all the, the builders that build instruments choose so carefully the wood for this reason. So the choosing the epoxy resin on top was such a nice idea. I just took inspiration from lures make, makers. And that's the, the thing, the great thing about YouTube tutorials, that you can take inspiration from one project and apply it on one other project completely different. So I hope I can give you inspiration with this project. Maybe somebody of you now can build like a birdhouse using this ring method and epoxy method. I don't know, that's up to you. So let me know here in the comments what you think about this, this trombone. And at this point, a very big thanks goes to Creality that allows me to test and use the 60 watt cutting and engraving machine that works great. I mean, the rings are cut perfectly, are such a precise, it creates such a precise cut, no burn marks, it's just a very clean cut. And I think I'm going to use and replace this Creality Falcon 2 Pro machine that will replace in speed and accuracy the CNC machine I have here. So <laughs> that's a nice thing to have in the shop and to start a business, for sure. So at this point, I leave you here my two previous projects. 
Check them out and see you next week with another do-it-yourself tutorial. <laughs> ciao, ciao. Oh, my God.